Ladies and gentlemen, software is falling apart. But you already know this. No doubt it is why you are here at this conference. So let's assume you all agree on that. What some of you believe is that we can fix this. And I'm here to tell you to give up. It's not going to happen. Why is that? It's because you live here. You live on this ship that's on fire. These are the platforms in which you inhabit. This is Windows, this is Linux, this is Mac. This situation is not going to get better. In fact, it is getting worse. And you can feel it every day as you use these systems. You could have fixed this problem a long time ago. You could have put out the fire when it was small. But that time has passed, and now the only correct option is to realize your fate, to abandon ship. But there's a sliver of hope here, because if we abandon ship, if we give up, we can realize the other card that we can play. We can realize that we can now build a new ship. Now, this ship here, what we could build, is small. Not very useful, but notice how it is not on fire. If we got aboard this ship instead, this is now what our future looks like. The new ship is not on fire, and in fact, we are, we're on it to improve it and make it better. And so clearly, in some period of time, we surpass the old ship and then are able to reach new heights that we were never able to see before. I am here today to tell you about my new ship. This is it. This is the physical hardware. I'm using it to give you this presentation right now. And um, of course, there's a software component as well. We have this primitive shell. Uh, I can run programs. Shouldn't be surprising. There's graphical uh, functionality as well. you know, what you would expect. We can ha compile things as well, because of course there is a compiler. Otherwise, what would you do with a computer? There you go. There's a compile. But the specifics are more interesting. This system is entirely self-hosting. It is entirely written from scratch. But that does not mean written in C. That means from scratch in that I have made both the programming language and the tool chain that supports this system. The system has no drivers. To those of you who have watched Casey Muratori's 30 million lie problem talk, this is uh, no surprise. This is the obvious correct action. I am solving the 30 million lie problem. Programs cannot access the file system by default on this operating system because otherwise, if you live where we currently live, when you download a program off of the internet, it can read all your files and send them back to somebody else on the internet. It can encrypt all your files and demand ransom. This is a clear oversight. And by doing things very differently from how Unix does them, we can just fix this in one easy swoop. Now, in summary, the message I have to you today is to stop spending this effort trying to put out the fire. Give up and start forging your own path. And I invite you to join me on my new ship as I try to do exactly that. You can find more information about my project at samishmith.com slash serenum. You can buy now at taberna.shop, gets you one of these and access to updates that I put out weekly as I continue to improve the system. And you can, of course, come to my booth where we will have a system up and running that you can play around with and look at. And of course, I will answer all your questions in depth there. But now I think it is time for audience questions. So I got to ask the first question. <laughs> All right, but shoot. Yeah, and this is my own personal feelings on this, right? Because mm. this is, to me, the first, I, the first time I saw this demo, mm. I was like, this is wild. 
right? Yeah. You're telling us abandon ship, leave the kingdoms that have been built, and live on your own island and construct your own empire kind of thing? That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you say, all of the attempts that we're doing to like incrementally solve things or like try to make new like changes, you're like saying, nah, just burn it all. <laughs> Here I am doing everything. So what inspired you, inspired you to go this route? Um, well, I, I, like many of you, I watched the, the talk, originally Casey's talk, and then like... Yeah, for, no. those who, sorry, for those who haven't seen it, it's called the, third, so the 30 million line code problem, yeah, I guess, yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. And it talks about, I guess, how operating systems and this, the, whole, the whole of an operating system usually, so on average, takes 30 million lines of code before you even get to boot up yeah, and play yeah. with the operating system. So it's a lot of code that you don't own, that you don't control. It, exactly, right? And even though it's open source, it's not like you could fix it because what are you going to do, like read it? That's impossible. It's too long, right? Um, so that's what inspired you, was watching that video? Well, I wanted somebody to solve it, and then I was looking around, and nobody was doing that. And so uh, I thought, like, oh, I'll, I guess I have to do it now. Um, and, uh, well, here we are, like, three years, three and something years later. Yeah, wow. That's crazy. So uh, does anybody have... Uh, I'm thinking right now. I know that there, <laughs> there are questions. I am so sorry about the slow chat server. That is something I intend to fix for next time. But I got the questions now. It's synced. <laughs> um, so here we go. From Professor Sill, thank you for your question. How does a program access the file system then? Right, right. So, so this goes back all the way to when they built Unix originally. You can imagine that you know, they basically just started having software on the machine that could do interesting things. And so they made decisions that optimized for how do we, in the most easy way, do cool things with the computer. And so uh, that's why they basically had this thing, you know, you have the open syscall, you give it a path, and then your, a program can open basically any file. Um, but this, this now causes all the problems we have now. Um, and so instead, what, what uh, Serenum has is that you're always using, you're always dealing with file handles, essentially, or, or directory handles. Um, and so, say I start off with a, a handle to this directory, then I can use that to get handles to what's in it. Yes. And I continue like that. Um, and then you can extend, if you get rid of the you know, main string args thing and say, no, well, I want to give a file over as my command line argument. That's what I'm doing most of the time, right? Um, then you can suddenly have, like for example, the compiler here runs and you give it access to the root directory or the directory of your source code and then it uses that to go compile, and you give it the directory, I want you to put the output in this file over here. And it doesn't even need to know what the file is, where it is, uh, because it's, everything is done with these handles directly. Hmm, interesting. Uh, this one's from Ginger Bill. Hey, Ginger. Uh, how much does it cost? Uh, $250, you can buy it right now at taberna.com. No, taberna.shop. Taberna.shop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I do like this like, kind of like in this independent spirit that you have, mm -hmm. and also being entrepreneurial. I do celebrate that. So yeah, I mean, it's yeah. hard. Otherwise, you know, yeah. I, I'll go hungry. <laughs> I mean, facts. Uh, this question is from Lando Loop. Thank you for your question. Uh, can you elaborate on what is on fire within current operating well, systems? I, 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 no. <sighs> like, I just, I, I, uh, I, well, I use my machine at home, and it's as if there's a radioactive rock somewhere near it. Because with each update, like, I use Linux, and it, you'd think it'd be fine. But just increasingly, stuff doesn't work, right? Right now, right now, my screen share on Discord is like a stochastic screen share. So I, need, I try screen share, and it's, it goes loading, and it will never complete. Right, so I need to stop, try again, stop, try again, and on like the fifth time, on average, it will work. Right? So what what is going on? I mean, you tell me why it is not fire. I want proof of that. Um, like I, I I'll sit in calls with people, and then I have to rejoin the call because say, oh no, my browser tab crashed, or oh no, Firefox crashed, or oh no, my system crashed, like it hung. Like it's no, it, to me it should be obvious, but uh, you know, if you don't see it, I guess you're blind. Oh, what, it works on his machine, apparently, right? Spitting fire. Next Can question. Can I buy your machine? <laughs> <laughs> this next question is from Charles. Thank you for your question. Can you elaborate on what is meant by no drivers? What is the model for managing access to hardware resources? 
Uh, yeah, so if you think, some people, when they say a driver, they just mean anything that talks to hardware, which, you know, okay, then by definition, everything is a driver, essentially. Um, but the way I think of a driver is it's something that bridges some kind of software uh, API to the actual underlying hardware that you don't know what it is. And so this would be like bridging OpenGL to your GPU. So if you know, if you have a fixed platform and you know what the hardware is, then I don't consider that to be a driver. Um, and then, you know, you can have a standardized platform where you don't have this crazy driver bloke. If, um, well, and then you have the different scenario of, okay, I plug in like a USB device and how does my program interact with it? If, if the device is only used by one program, then you don't actually have to put the code for that in the OS. Like the OS, uh, and I'm, this is slightly more to do because this is planned, but it's essentially the design I'm going for, which is the, if you can give up on multiplexing for a device, then you can just have one program talking to that device at a time, and then the, the driver just becomes a library, right? And you might think that's pointless, but then you don't like arrive on the platform and like the thing doesn't work because the driver isn't installed or there's a different version and so there are weird bugs, like it's under your control and then, it's, then it just becomes code you write like as, as the problem you were trying to solve, right? I want to, I want to operate this printer. Okay, great, let me write the code that does the things to talk to the printer to make it print. Just in case I'm picking questions, I'm curating them in the interest of time. Uh, so thank you for your patience. Um, what makes it a what makes it uh, a ship and not an island? Uh, the island was the original analogy, uh, but then it's oh. it's hard to build new islands. That takes a lot of like sand, especially out in the ocean. <laughs> and also, and also, the the island doesn't work because islands can't be on fire, like they don't sink. Hmm. Hmm. I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. but that's very sudden. Uh, but perhaps with all you who don't believe it's on fire, that's the more accurate scenario. Somebody was asking if he's been on a volcano <laughs> in terms of yeah. the island. Um, so, uh, Ruben, thank you for your question. Did you bootstrap the Brevis toolchain by writing binary? Uh, no. That's cool, but it's also, like, not very productive. Uh, no, so I wrote a version of the compiler in C first. And then I wrote like the the version two of the compiler in Brevis, and then it's been self-hosting since then. What will stop Serena from growing to another thirty million line problem? Uh, but because of the driver thing, uh, like, and this is outlined in the talk. But basically, there's like an inflection point in the growth of the Linux kernel when USB and like having GPUs show up and then suddenly it starts to rocket up as they need to just keep adding code for every different possible device under the sun that you want to work. Um, and because of the no drivers thing, that's what keeps it, you know, small. Um, I missed um, lots of questions. This is a good question about the hardware, right? Like what's the hardware? Like what hardware platform is this based on? Yeah, so I literally uh, bought a board from China um, that's, you know, RISC-V SOC, 800 megahertz, one gigabyte. Uh, oh, RISC-V is open schematics hardware, right? E well, no, not this chip, but the ISA is. So that's useful because gotcha. then you don't need to ask Intel to like be allowed to make a CPU. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's completely useless if you don't buy this. I mean, you can try it, but um, the default Linux distro they ship with this that they expect you to use uh, it takes three minutes to get to the TTY login screen, uh, which is, you know, beyond ridiculous. Yes. Can it run Doom? Uh, buy one. I'd like to see the port, please. <laughs> um, will, there, will there be microtransactions to access certain files, folders, <laughs> or maybe OS components? I, I don't think so, but I can't stop you from adding that. Since we ship source code, to everybody, so you have full, full, full ownership. Um, I even sign off on copyright, so please don't publish this on the internet. I will be very upset then. Uh, but you, you could do that, and I have no legal recourse, so please. <laughs> I, I want to eat food, right? I don't want to be hungry. Let's do, since again, we're a little behind, on, I want to get us back on schedule. Maybe a couple more questions and we'll move on, but there's more questions. You can check them on the chat server later for sure. Um, people use all kinds of USB devices. Do you intend to support all these devices? And if so, how do you intend to do this with a no drivers design? 
Well, like I outlined, but also you support them, right? It's not like um, it shouldn't be that hard to if you need to use a device to I, I mean, if the manufacturer is being annoying, then uh, I guess, you know, good luck. But uh, for most things, I mean, it should be really possible to, you know, if you have a weird printer, figure out how the printer works and then, you know, write the printer program and then uh, you should be off to the races. What's the plan for supporting Discord screen share on <laughs> Serena? <laughs> well, so, so the reason the logo is a tree is because it's sort of the, the start of supporting many different things. I don't, I don't want to be porting things. I want to say, what is the new thing that we can write? Because when, it's, when writing new stuff is easy, uh, then let's do that first. So uh, yeah, when we make the new version of Discord, there will be a screen share that works. Um, we couldn't get through all questions, so I'm gonna, if that's okay, go to yeah. the chat server and start a thread for each question as an answer so we can keep the, the, the room clean for the next presentation. But this is wild, and I love it. I do love the spirit that you have of, of you're driven and you're ambitious, and I wish you the best of luck. Round of applause. <laughs> Round of applause. That was fun. Yeah.